Good afternoon and welcome to another session of Teams in 20. Today we're going to be talking about what's new in Teams. And I know over the last few weeks we've actually uh, gone over some of those big ticket items that have been new in Teams. So the, the, obviously the, the new Teams experience, um, we've talked about Town Hall, we've talked about the Meetup. So I thought today we would talk about some of those smaller uh, features that you might not have, have noticed coming to Teams. And then at the end of today, today's session, I'm hoping you're going to help me try something a little bit different uh, that's going to help us prepare for the upcoming holiday season. Today, we are going to be talking about a few features like video effects. We're going to be talking about the People app, a new channel experience, webinar recordings, which I absolutely love, and, and then my, my little surprise element at the end. You've got me today. My name's Joe Johnston. I'm a Senior Customer Success Manager looking after our LRG customers in the UK. So let's get started. We're going to kick off straight away with what we're calling Portrait Blur. Hey, you're probably thinking, well, we've already got this. We've got background blur, which is now standard blur. <laughs> Portrait blur is a feature in Teams that allows you to, to blur your background during the meeting, but it creates the depth of field effects. So the speaker is more in focus, so it's a, a sharper focus, and hopefully that helps you concentrate more, more on what the speaker is saying. It also blurs the background, but not to the full effect that the background blur does, because background blur is a little bit different because it blurs your entire background uniformly. And, and that's great when you've got the dog, the cat, the washing, and all the other stuff that you want to block out. So let's have a look at that so we can try this out on this call so let me show you what this looks like so if i go into effects and avatars you see i've got the the standard background blur and i've also got the portrait blur so if i look at standard we apply that because it's blocked out my background and uniformly it's kind of all blended in now, if I go and have a look at portrait blur and apply that, you see the background is less blurred. So you can see a little bit more of what's going on behind me, but I'm more in focus now. And we're, you know, I've kind of, I suppose, been brought to the forefront of the screen. So, yeah, I definitely think this is a better option if you want to really concentrate on the presenter i'll just show you that again so standard blur everything's blacked out so if you want to hide the washing and the kids and and the dog then that's great but portrait blur if you just really want to focus on that presenter uh, let me just go back to my teams in 20 background the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, the People app. So another cool little app that's come out, um, and it's a place where you can store all your contacts. So whether they're external or internal, um, you can do things like index bets, like favorite them, put them into categories. Uh, you know, if I've just got a, an email address for one of the councils that I work with, and I might just put that in there, or I can search up a colleague that I work with uh, on that council account. Um, it's also a really quick way to get contacts into your, your speed dial. And as, as we go through this, at the end of this, I'm going to do a little demo and show you where you can find these. One thing I would say is uh, in classic teams, I couldn't find the people app. So I think it is only actually in the, in the new teams experience. Um, talking about the new experiences, the new channel experience. So now you can have your activity appear at the top or at the bottom. So the area where you've got to, to create your post, you can have, have it at the bottom of the thread or at the top of, of the thread. I think lots of people got a bit annoyed when the new channel experience came in and the way the, the posts were uh, the opposite way around to what they were comfortable with. But some people have loved it. So now you've got the option to pick which one you want. And just staying with that channel experience, 
you know, some threads can be quite long and we want to reduce as many clicks as we possibly can. So now and when you're looking at those replies in a, in a long thread, we'll actually see the, the last three posts there. Um, and, but, you know, if you want to obviously look at the rest of the thread, you can then click the link. Now, the info pane uh, has been there for quite a while, actually, but I don't think people have used it as, as much as um, they, they could have. Now that the new Teams experience doesn't have that saved post option, uh, this might be quite useful if that's something you used before, because in the info pane, you can pin posts. So you can have that list of posts that were really useful within that channel. Uh, you can also search that channel, see the people in there, and manage the channel from that info pane. And I'll, I'll show you that as we go through the demo. Another thing that people used to get a little bit confused with when they started using Teams, um, unless you clicked the A in the options in the bottom of the uh, post box, uh, you wouldn't get this view of subject and, and all the formatting tools. So people used to just put in their replies and, and they didn't take advantage of the other features. So now we've made it a little bit more simpler. When you click post, you automatically get this box. You don't have to put a subject in, you don't have to use the formatting tools, but people are aware that they're there now. So I think that just makes it a, a little bit less uh, confusing. Um, you can also now open your conversation into separate windows. Uh, you can uh, resize and reposition, reposition those windows if you want. It helps with that multitasking. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can either go to from the channel three dots and say open in a new window, or you can click directly on the conversation that you're having in the header area, right click and, and open in new window. And then finally, on my little sprint of, of features here, and this is my favorite, webinar recordings. Now, this is, this has been so much needed. So many times we do webinars and then it's, well, how do we get the recording out to, to our customers? So this is a great way to, to automate this. Um, now, when you create your webinar you've, and you've had your recording, it's saved in your OneDrive. You can automatically share that with, from your OneDrive with everybody that attended the webinar and it creates a beautiful little email for you to send as well. So just making that whole process a, a lot easier. You can un unpublish those webinars if you want to. Um, they are by default published recordings are expire after 30 days and I think you can extend that for an extra 60 days uh, if needed and we're going to go and have a look at all of those things now let me just end this we're going to kick off by just having a look at that uh, people app so really simple, I've searched in the apps for people in the new team experience, and it's given me this people app, which I've now pinned. Uh, you can see I've got a, a bit of a navigation set down the left hand side. I can see all my contacts. I can see the ones that I decided to favorite. Um, and I've got some categories. So I've decided in, in my accounts, uh, sorry, my contacts that I, I might want to put them into certain categories. So if I think Megan should be in tech support, I can quickly do that. Now, really simple. I can go and add a contact, uh, pick anybody out from the organizational list, fill out some information for them, whatever information I've got. Or uh, if I don't, if they're not part of the organization, I can just create a contact card for them. I don't have to look up, which is great, which means I've got all my contacts all in, in one area. Uh, I might actually want to do a few other things. So with Megan, I can add it to favorites. I can also do things like add to speed dial, which means that if I go into my calls section, Megan's now on my speed dial as well. So just a nice little app, uh, keeping things simple. If you have to 
keep a lot of different customers or people external to your organization. You want their, their email addresses or, or their phone numbers. Uh, yeah, really self-explanatory. Um, so let's have a look at the new channel experience. So if I go into my research and development channel, you can see here on the three dots, I can put see new posts at the top. And I can post my um, thread from here, or I can see new posts at the bottom. Whichever works for you. Some people prefer to to get the threads coming in from the from the top of the the list there. Uh, what else? Have I got info pane. So this is where you're going to find the info pane, just hidden away in these little little icons that we kind of like to hide away from you. Um, this opens this new section. Now, what I like about this is if this post was really useful for me and I want to keep it there, I want to find it easily, I can pin that. And it's pinned it into this side here. So maybe this bit of code here is really important to me as well. Um, and I could, so you get the idea. So those people that uh, were used to the saved posts and, and are missing that now, they've gone to new teams, that might be really useful for you. You can also do things like uh, search that channel as well and manage the channel and channel notifications. So fairly straightforward, just want to call it out because not many people realize it's there. Uh, the other part I mentioned was about this post. So when you click, um, Let's try to show that again. Start a post. It opens up the full box now, and not just has, as it did before. We've got this reply. Just have this section here, and you would have had to press this the A button. Now you're getting the the full box automatically. Um, just you know, for people that are maybe not as familiar with using this, don't forget there are other settings here. You know, you can decide if you want to have replies to your replies, your posts. You if this is a post that you want to put into multiple channels uh, in different teams, you can also use the multiple channels option there. Um, and then obviously you've got the post and announcement piece there. Yes, I know everybody wants to be able to put pictures back in this area. Uh, I miss that feature too. I have it on good um, knowledge that this is going to change and this will be a lot better in the future. So I think we'll be able to use kind of AI generated images for our heading. So I'll be excited to see that be developed soon. Uh, what else did I want to show you? Oh, opening conversation new window. So if I wanted, um, let me just say, oh, one thing I have noticed is in my demo tenant, this feature isn't available yet. So I'm just going to go into my um, live tenant and see if I can just show you this feature. I can actually find this. I might have to come back to this. Let me just have a look. Okay. So if I go into my teams and I click the three dots here, I've got open conversation in new window, or I can just click into the header. I just right click then open conversation in new window. Uh, that seems to be rolling out because uh, it's not available yet in my demo tenant. So you, sh you should see that soon. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you here, the one I'm most excited about is the webinar. So I have created a webinar already. Let me see if I can find the details on that. I've already had my webinar, had it last night, and just opened the invite. Now, if I go to manage event, it opens a, another screen here, and I've got all the details. So this was my webinar that took place. Um, I've got my bios of my presenters, but down here you see I've got recordings. And what I can do now is publish from OneDrive. So if I go to recent, that's my webinar that I just did. I can press confirm and press publish. 
Now, this might take a few seconds. But what this is going to do now is it's going to publish, get this uh, recording ready to publish. And once it's done, I can publish this out and everybody that attended that uh, session is going to receive an email. So let me just go back to my slide deck. So once it's published, you get this view. Um, and then everybody that attended is going to be able to click on that button and they're going to be able to consume that webinar. And you can obviously edit this. So you can edit the, the screen at the top, add a logo, add your text. And I think that's, that's fantastic. It's going to take a, a lot of stress out of a lot of people. OK, so that brings me to the end of my uh, what's new in Teams, just some really small uh, items there. But another thing I wanted to, to call out is we're getting closer to the festive season and people like to be a bit more interactive. Now, if you haven't seen this, this is great, especially as we get to this more festive season. So if you go into apps and you type in games, you see we get this lovely library and it tells you how many people can play your games. So somewhere between one and a thousand, one to eight but this is a great way to interact and you can do it with external users so we're going to try this i'm quite nervous about this um let's just save that because i've never tried this live yet with external users <laughs> this is going to be fun so i'm going to invite you all to play this game uh i think we'll have a game of uh would you rather now, I think when you you get a, a notification here that says that you want to join the game. Okay, so. So once you pitch your game, the questions start coming up and people start answering them. And as they answer them, their faces appear in which answer they selected. So if you're if you're playing with a big group of people, you're going to get lots of faces and it'll say what percentage of people selected that answer. And at the end of this icebreakers game, it actually pairs you with somebody and says you had the most in common with, with this person. So it's a good little icebreaker exercise. Um, can have a lot of fun with with the questions too. And you can change the game, you can end the game if you want, you can end the and end the voting. If you've got 10 minutes left of a meeting, why not just have a have a game? Even Solitaire, the game that I thought was the most boring game in the world that I seem to have spent hours and hours playing back in the uh early or well, late 90s. Um is competitive so it's whoever finishes the deck of cards first uh, i had a game the other day with some of my colleagues and it was it was hilarious so i'm going to share the links uh for, for this and give you a bit more information about some of the other games but go and have a play it's uh it's fun and that is it for me uh so thank you so much for for joining today hope you have a lovely rest of your day thanks everybody